Hello and welcome to the Listening Posts unboxing channel on YouTube. Today we're unboxing NAD's brand new 50th anniversary C3050 SE integrated amp. Previously and maybe over here if I, we can all do it properly, um, we have seen the uh, limited edition, the very limited edition um, serial number specific um, associated with the release of a very cosmetically similar one, again celebrating 50 years. 50 years. But the uh, um, LE proved to be so successful, of course, that the SE was released. Some of the core differences, essentially, from an end user's perspective, the limited edition came with the MDC2 card for the Blue Eye streaming, the standard edition that is optional. Now in saying that, as a standalone amplifier, this is an absolute rock star. Retro styling, BU meters, all a wooden wrap, retro looking knobs, all of those things designed to look kind of quirky, kind of cool. But hidden under the bonnet is amazing performance. 100 watts a channel. 20 amps of peak current, which is absolutely unheard of. of. Of course, it's because NAD has managed to tame their hybrid digital amplifiers and deliver all sorts of control at any point in time. It's modular, of course, as I mentioned. You can add streaming if you want, but out of the box, it's got Bluetooth. It's got uh, digital inputs. It's got a pre-in, pre-out. It's got A and B speakers. And again, I'm going to reiterate, 100 watts a channel, which means this relatively compact amplifier delivers all of the control that you would ever need. So, let's have a look. NAD. So they've gone with a two-tone box. Again, a little bit more of a celebration as far as things go. 50th edition on the top, some tracking information. On one end, we've got scannable information associated with the model, serial number, all of those types of things, and some voltage requirements and other things. Again, a mention of the model number, the C3050SE, uh, along with 3050th anniversary, and an emulation of that serial number. Opening, it's really, really straightforward. It is worth mentioning that here in New Zealand, this has been opened in advance and a New Zealand IEC power cord added. It's just what we have to do. Um, small population of course, so it means that uh, power cords and other accessories will often get um, swapped out. The top of the amplifier and all of its packaging is protected by an additional piece of cardboard. This is simply to avoid any uh, cut or disappointment associated with somebody getting a little bit too aggressive with a craft knife. Open that. You see a uh, comprehensive um, user manual, uh, quick startup guide and access to it. It's all online nowadays. Um, pulling it off, we see the next layer, and this is where some of the accessories live. In here, and it's a little slide by the way, uh, we've got NAD's uh, sort of somewhat universal remote control. Most of their electronics comes with this um, remote. There's no point having anything specific nowadays with so much of the control from an app. In fact, there's a Bluetooth app, obviously, that NAD offer. Um, or the BlueOS app, which allows for streaming. The remote control doesn't become as important as it once was. In saying that, NAD haven't scrimped on the remote control. It's got a lovely look and feel. The batteries slide in, and so it's got a good weight to it. It uh, does all of the basic functions, along with the control associated with their CD players and things, all, all in one. So it's excellent to see that they haven't forgotten about the traditional approach to controlling things in a living space. There is the uh, Bluetooth aerial, and of course, as always, hang around, I'll take some photographs, I'll fit this to the back of it. There's a couple of AA batteries, and then the packaging itself. Okay. Now, They've utilised closed cell foam, and part of it, of course, is to ensure that something that they've spent so much time, care and energy in crafting deli is delivered to you in one piece. It's, cu it's cut to uh, perfection as far as its support. And again, look, just pause, because I want to just 
show you for a moment some of the um, implications as far as what we're going to see and how lovely this is. It's got a wood grain wrap and it's just it's, it's awesome to see. Now lifting the amplifier out and looking further down we see a, another box and this is where uh, the power cords and other things live. So internationally it's not unusual to see a number of power cords in here, uh, all sorts of plugs and fittings. Uh, but it's been swapped out and in New Zealand we've got a 3-pin IEC earthed power lead. There's a desiccant and other bag associated with preserving this in freight, and we get rid of it. Now, lifting it up off to one side and onto its edge, there is a plastic tag holding the um, bag closed. It's very straightforward to either nick or sort of lift that out of the road. And then start the process of sort of sliding that off. The front fascia is then pr uh, protected by a semi sort of soft cloth bag. It's actually a bit of a polishing bag. And of course it's designed to stop any potential scratching of the front in transit. Just peel it off, rock the amplifier onto the other edge carefully, lift the bag, and then take the last of the polished cloth bag off as well. So, looking at this for the first time, you can immediately see the appeal. It's got a wonderful elegance to it, a simplicity to its design. Everything is designed to look kind of retro, kind of like something your dad might have owned, except it adds all of the modern features that you might expect. Continuing with their retro design, um, some of the more modern features are actually introduced with relay switches and other things to ensure that they can control them from the remote or can control them from an app. So the power isn't a traditional switch like its predecessors might have had. Um, it's a simple push button which livens the amplifier up. Like all of the NAD amplifiers, there's a tricolor LED above that offering some information about its status. During its power up, it'll turn orange, and when it's operating correctly, it'll be another color, and if there's a fault, it'll be red, and so on. There's a traditional headphone socket directly beneath the power socket. And then we've got the really cool kind of retro approach as far as bass and treble control, all in an analog pot. Of course, uh, everyone comments about the VU meters associated with the particular amplifier, and it's wonderful to see this harks back to one of the first amplifiers NAD ever produced. And with the traditional use of VU meters, there's a simple, elegant approach to its design and performance as well. Across the top, we've got in uh, cursive the um, NAD logo and the new acoustic dimension, along with the model number, the C3050. Beneath it, we've got simple push buttons, and again, these are illuminated with LEDs um, to, to turn on the phono input traditional line, optical coax, or HDMI. The HDMI is an audio return channel, most commonly used from a television, but uh, could also be used from a high-end SA CD player if required. We've got a simple enough switch for A and B speakers, off, A, B, and A plus B. Then we've got a basin, uh, sorry, balance control, and the balance control has a simple sort of notch to it in its uh, central location, so you won't um, inadvertently have one speaker uh, running a little bit more than others. Then we've got a couple of um, uh, sort of recessed illumination lights, and this is associated with Bluetooth input and um, flashing associated with pairing and giving a confirmation of pairing. One of the reasons it's one of these sort of offset things is no uh, tri-colour, colour display, some modern sort of feedback thing is going to be appropriate with something that's so well styled. So they've offered, opted for um, a significant departure of their normal approach and had a couple of um, sort of lights off to one side. The same goes for BlueOS and MDC modules as far as their inputs, and it's pretty straightforward to add them and control them if required. Now a departure from the original is the use of a rotary encoder. A rotary encoder for the volume controllers is, is, has no stop point or start point. It means that it can be so easily controlled from its app 
as well as its remote control. Tilting it forward, we see immediately an emulation of some of the original designs with a central um, ventilation and then this beautiful wood grain wrap. Looking at the side, we see the traditional large bolt. And, and, you know, obviously this thing isn't very deep. In fact, it's not much deeper than one of their little skinny amplifiers. Looking, looking at the back, this is actually where all the magic happens. We've got a traditional rocker switch for power, IEC, and a fused input. There's a spare fuse in there, by the way. We've got the dual sets of binding posts associated with the A and B speakers. And these are covered with a little plastic cap. As usual, of course, these are pretty straightforward to remove. Most of the time we pull them out straight away and throw them in the rubbish. Uh, but yes, again, any, any, it's very, very easy to remove those. Beside that, we've got a subwoofer output. And of course, this is what I alluded to as far as the uh, feature set that they've introduced to modernise the amplifier. We've also got the bridging clips associated with main in and pre out, enabling you to perhaps put this through any number of different things and add a significant um, a, a number of flexibility options to this. We've got a single traditional line input and beside it a ground for the phono input. Then beside that a single coax and a single optical digital in. All of course as you saw selectable from the front. Then there's the HDMI clearly showing the eARC or audio return channel. Above that, we've got a couple of little things associated with um, operating of the VU meter. You can get it to uh, move associated with the signal input or the signal path through the speaker or the speaker output. There's a 12 volt trigger out and that enables this to turn on other connected devices, perhaps like power amplifiers. And then you've got a traditional IR input. Uh, for external control or home automation if required. Uh, there's a USB at the rear. This can provide 5 volts to other devices, but its primary job is not an input. It's for servicing, perhaps software updating. Then, the aerial for the Bluetooth uh, that I spoke about earlier. Now, it is an MDC unit, as you can see clearly. Some of the uh, other amplifiers that NAD produce have two slots. Uh, with this particular one showing, uh, sorry, having so many of the additional features that many were uh, adding with modules, they've added just a single MDC slot. And it's MDC2, slightly longer cards, offering a little bit of a quality and flexibility option within it. So, there we have it. NAD's masterful 50th anniversary integrated amplifier. 100 watts a channel, A and B speakers, hybrid amplifier and design, MDC ready, all of those types of things. Not to mention stunning price. So it's been wonderful to have enjoyed this unboxing and shared it with you today at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.